Uh, let me continue. All right. So this is Park Commission meeting, August 3rd, 2021. Um, I'm going to start by uh, start with roll call. So I will go in the order that I see people popping up on my screen. So uh, Chad Smith. Present. <laughs> and everybody jumps around. Nicole Marisi. Here. Right. Um, Mary Elizabeth Kofer. Here. I know I'm missing someone. I'm trying to look. Everybody bounces around so much when people are logging on. Uh, and Bill McDuffie, I guess that's it. I'm not seeing who I'm missing. Don't Laurie. Didn't I say you? Okay. Laurie Mills. Here. There. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for holding me uh, accountable, Laurie. All right. So first item is public comments. Citizens wishing to address the Park Commission on items not on the agenda will be received this time. Please limit your comments to three minutes. In accordance with the Open Meetings Act, the Park Commission is restricted from discussing or taking action on items not listed on the agenda. agenda. Citizens who wish to address the Park Commission with regard to matters on the agenda will be received at the time the item is considered. So if you would like to run down, I see Mary Elizabeth Cooper has her hand raised as a citizen, so. Yeah, I just want to address, um, when I first got on the Park Commission, uh, they had the butterfly gardens was an issue they were trying to address. And rather than it go on and on, I said, let's just get this done. And so using volunteers uh, and volunteer plants, my own money, money that was donated by some people, Several people from the off leash here, he just came over and gave us money or plants. It was just pretty startling to me, but that was awfully nice. But uh, what's been brought up in this meeting before, and we never have gotten any resolution to, and rather than put it on the agenda again, I just want to ask when can we get water to the butterfly garden? Um, it I don't see our, I know uh, they're trying to get on right now in the other, other office. Um, I believe we have a quote for it. Um, and so either it will get into the budget. I don't think it rises to the level of um, an exceptional item, but they do have a quote now for the work. We may have to get a couple others, um, but it's, it's, it's in the works. Okay, can you please keep us informed on that? Because for them to have this on the agenda, uh, actually, for a number of years, the Butterfly Gardens, for a number of years, I think that we should actually kind of prioritize this instead of this just being, a, I, I don't know, I feel neglected here. <laughs> we put some work into this, and when Brian Ryder gets back to town, we intend to pull the rest of those invasive species out of there. But anyway, thank you so much. But if you would keep me informed or keep us informed as to the watering of that, uh, getting water there, that'd be great. Thank you, Ashley. Mm -hmm. Mary Elizabeth, when you're done talking, if you can lower your hand. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out. Oh, there it is. Got there it. you go. That's awesome. That helps me. Um, all right. Any other public comments? Uh, if you're on Zoom, there is a hand icon down at the, at least on my screen, on the lower part. And then I believe it's star nine. Is that correct, Ashley? If you're calling in. Yes, starting to raise your hand and star six to unmute. It doesn't look like we have any at the moment, but if we have any okay. join, I'll, I'll try to reiterate that. All right. Well, with that in mind, I'm going to see. Okay. Don still hasn't quite joined us. Um, I'm going to move on to the consent agenda. I'll cons uh, well, yeah, consent agenda. So consent agenda. I'll consent agenda items are considered to be routine by the Park Commission and may be enacted by one motion. There's no separate discussion on consent agenda item. And basically, if a board member wants to discuss it, then we have to bounce it down into the regular agenda. And the only consent agenda item is discussion and possible action on minutes from July 13th, 2021, Park Commission meeting. Do I hear a motion? 
anybody. Somebody. Anybody want to make a motion? Can you uh, can you repeat that again? Basically, we're we're looking at the minutes from July 13, 2021, Park Commission meeting. And usually this is where somebody makes a motion and somebody seconds it, and then we vote to approve if nobody has any objections to the minutes as they currently are. So I could make a motion to approve the minutes? Yes. I make a motion to approve the minutes from July 13th. Okay, we have a motion. I'll second it. This is Chad. Oh, 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 oh. Got to fight. Um, all right, I'm gonna, Chad was louder. I'm gonna second by Chad. All those in favor, say aye, raise hands, make a motion. All those opposed, hearing none, the motion passes unanimously to accept the minutes as written. Moving on to regular agenda. So we have a couple of things. I wanna see if Don has joined us, cause I know, so we have some, people from the public that I know want to maybe discuss agenda item number four. Um, so I'm not sure what the time frame is on those folks. I want to be mindful. Um, if that was Don's item, I think number three was his, I think, no. his, or maybe he was part of it. If you want to switch them up or something to accommodate the people here, we can do that as well. Well, yeah, I do, because I know there's a couple of citizens on, and I want to kind of be respectful for people who have joined us who might have other commitments uh, out there. So if it's okay with everyone, I'm going to bump number four up, and then we'll come back to number three. Um, so I would Don Hudson here checking in by phone. Hi, Don. Did uh, did we lose Phil? Is anyone else able able to hear Phil? I can't. I hear cannot. It. I can't hear anything either. Phil. We just had that? our power go out for a second, so he might have been. Yeah, we that. Well, I completely lost my other computer. Yeah, I believe off. he was calling up item four. Um, do we want to, do y'all want to go ahead and open it up to public comments on item four? Um, or I, we probably would like to wait for Phil. Um, looks like he dropped off the meeting. Maybe he'll rejoin us. I was going to suggest if his power fluctuated, it might just take a minute for his router to reboot, the system to reboot so he can get internet again. In the interest of time, then we may want to keep going. We lost Chad as well. We do still have quorum now that Don has joined us. If y'all wanted to keep going, um, we can wait though too. I can wait a few minutes. Who, who else? Um, what what board members are at the meeting? I can't um, see. Uh, phones. Sure. Right now, um, Don, uh, Phil, Phil, and Chad were here, but they just got kicked off. We also have Lori Mills, Mary Elizabeth Kofer, and Nicole Morisi. Okay. Do we still have Nicole? Yes. Yes, okay. ma'am. I'm here. Okay. I'm texting Chad right now to see if he's coming back on.
they come from. What do you mean here they come? They are on. It looks like Chad and Phil are both on, but they are still muted. Okay. Sorry, I just jumped back on. Uh, my Wi-Fi went out at my house, so I'm on with as, my phone. As did mine. Uh, right. Yeah. In, yeah. So it looks like it was that full trunk level out here. So we're back. Um, and yeah, my I wasn't even able to get on to call in by a telephone. So did anything occur while we were bounced off temporarily? No. Okay, great. Yeah, we were right. waiting on, on y'all to start up item four again. Okay. okay, all right. So I don't know where it left off, but I was basically saying I was requesting that we bounce it, even though I'd really like Don to be present. Uh, but I know that we've got some citizens here that are uh, interested in this and particular Don is item. Here now, Phil. Don oh, great. I, I'm, I'm here, Phil. Awesome. So glad about that. All right. So. So I uh, requesting that we just bounce up to number four in case there are citizens who want to bounce off uh, early and that way we're uh, being mindful and respectful of our other citizenry. So um, discussion and possible action to review private and commercial rate structures and rental fees for Rollingwood Park facilities in Hadley Field and to number two, adopt the process for approved vendors rent fields and make recommendations city council and what i was saying is i think we had one meeting i think don nicole and myself were on the subcommittee i think we're still in the trying uh gaining information so i would like us to hopefully restrict this to discussion i don't think we're anywhere near making a recommendation that's my personal belief uh the city council and i don't think there's any Super urgency to do so, but that's just where I sit on this. So, um, right now, I'd like to hear from citizens, and particularly Melissa. I reached out to Melissa Morrow to to join us to try to figure out what, if anything, WEA does, because I think that uh, what they do is helpful for us to think about when we're looking at this. So. Melissa wants to speak, she can raise her hand and mute, unmute herself. So, and I'm not seeing. Oh, Melissa Morrow raised her hand. Okay. So I'd like to hear from the public first. Uh, and Melissa, go ahead. Can y'all hear me? We can. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so uh, Melissa Morrow, 2502 Timberline Drive. Um, lived in Rollingwood for 22 years and uh, served on council for four years. Um, <clears throat> I uh, also work at West Austin Youth Association. Um, we manage uh, two locations, nine fields, uh, three gyms. Um, so it is, this is definitely an area that I uh, have some knowledge about. <clears throat> I was looking first at the um, some of the criteria you had for the commercial groups um, to do, um, and I that looks good. It looks like y'all are on the right track for asking for all the right kind of information. Um, we also, when we are going to uh, work with a new commercial group, we usually sit down with them in a face to face um, because you do get a lot of sort of fly by night. Uh, guys who just want to, you know, charge 100 bucks an hour and use your facility to um, do one-on-one -on -one sort of select, you know, sports uh, lessons, um, which I I I would uh, not 
recommend the city enter into that stuff. I my recommendation would be to stick with um, groups that are established, you know, have been providing uh, youth sports for a long time, have a good reputation that, you know, you can get references on. Um, there's a lot more stuff in the youth um, that you guys have probably heard in the news, et cetera. Whenever you have <clears throat> coaches that are just one-on-one -on -one with kids, there's more likelihood of some other things happening um, that are not so great. Um, so uh, as far as the um, dollar amount, um, we usually have sort of preferred partners like like uh, Rollingwood does with Western Hills Little League where we just charge $25 an hour. But um, really for everyone else, we put it closer to 50. And that's really based on when you look at a field, for instance, um, and, and I'm speaking specifically about uh, youth, uh, youth use. Um, in, in a given year, let's say you took the three rolling wood fields that we have, and you could during the 52 weeks, seven days a week, 12 hours a day, so I'm basically saying from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. as usable sort of park hours, <clears throat> of those, so that's about 4,368 potential hours, there's really only about 2,768 youth hours that you can use it because kids are in school, um, it's uh, holidays, vacations, those kinds of things. Um, and so we use that as sort of our, if we are looking at a budget for the field, like how much it costs us to actually maintain that field, we sort of divide that, um, those hours by that number in order to kind of arrive at what's a number that we can maintain those fields and do these things that we need to do. Um, and don't forget that, you know, right now we just have one entity, uh, Western Hills Little League, that's scheduling the fields. Um, if you are going to uh, have multiple different commercial uses, you're going to need to include the staff time that it takes to, you know, make sure that they show up on time, make sure that they leave the field, that they schedule it, that when they get a rain out, they can reschedule. Um, so it's not just the field maintenance time that you have. You also need to think about the scheduling. Um, I'm not necessarily against uh, uh, rolling wood utilizing the fields more for youth sports. It's just that it's, uh, it is, it does take a lot of staff time. We here have basically three full-time people um, with, now of course we have nine fields, but you probably would need a uh, one full-time person to, if you're, if you're going to get into truly scheduling that many different groups um, at that time. So anyway, I hope that that um, helps you know a little bit. So like I said, $50 is usually what really covers our costs. Um, again, not I know Rollingwood has different costs than uh, WEA does, um, but on field maintenance and staffing, et cetera, if you're going to fully use those fields. One last thing that I do want to mention is that, um, you know, honestly, those fields are really, compared to ours, um, are, are very underutilized. Um, there's there's really not much sports and really not much even citizen use that happens on it, even with as much of, you know, having dogs and people just jump on it and play on it. It's a fairly, uh, you know, there's a lot of open play time. So the good news of that is that it is allowing your grass to restore on its own. And, and, the, and maybe the last thing I'll say is I was so impressed with the aeration um, this year that was done by the rolling wood staff and the the care that they've um, put into it because the fields are looking a lot better, especially um, four, five, and six. Um, even with as much use that people not being um, at work or school um, have used the fields, they're they're looking really good. Um, what I do think we need to do is get on um, sort of a weed and reseeding program and start doing that more regularly, which will also include having some rest time of the fields. Um, generally, I'd say probably a month in the summer and a month in the winter is, is a good time to kind of rest. And we could have it where basically you have a different field each month that would do that. So probably take November, December, January, and, and have one of those months be a rest time for each of the fields. And then in the summer, probably uh, May, June, I'm sorry, June, July, August, take one month off for each of those fields. Again, it just kind of extends the life of the grass and gives you some um, time to uh, reseed 
and those kinds of things. I hope that helps. It helps a lot. Thanks a lot. And I do know that our staff, uh, as well as aerating, they did recede. Unfortunately, uh, that maybe got knocked back by the the winter apocalypse that we didn't suffer. But um, I think they're planning on trying to do that again soon. So that that should help on all the fields as well. Do we have any other citizens that would like to speak about uh, vendor rates or anything regarding vendors? If so, oh, we do. Uh, Jen, if you can unmute yourself down at the lower left. Sorry about that. Um, I'm Jennifer Meyer. I live at 4831 Rolling One and I've been here for seven years. Um, I'm all for getting more use out of the fields, but I want to make sure that it's considered that kids like to go to go play Frisbee with their friends. People have pick up cricket games and pick up baseball practices with their friends and their parents. People go to the dog park area, which I know we always, you know, going to the dog park area is fun and we, ev we evict ourselves if there's an organized thing. But if, there's an, if there are other fields open where people can go play, they do. And the dogs can't do that. They have to stay in that one area. So I just wanted to make sure that for the citizens of Rollingwood that currently use the park, that the park fields are not scheduled 12 hours a day, seven days a week for something to make money to the exclusion of the citizens of Rollingwood who love the park. That's pretty much what I wanted to put in. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, Paul, uh, Paul Meyer. Oh, this hand was raised. Now it's not. I'm not sure what's going on. No, there. sorry. I, I dropped it because you called my name. Sorry. Oh, okay. I'll leave right. it up. I'm not sure the uh, methodology here. So, um, Paul Meyer, I'm upstairs from Jennifer Meyer. I'm <laughs> also at 4831 Rollingwood Drive, been here seven years. Um, and I, so I'm coming into this fresh. I read the minutes from last time, but one thing that didn't quite come through was the goals here and sort of the expectations. Um, so some of it was, you know, I saw the rate structure, 25 bucks an hour. I'm actually a general question. Are any of the fields currently available for um, rent for usage, commercial usage through Western Hills? Or is there no usage currently available? Can somebody answer that? I believe our, I, I believe that Western Hills is no longer allowed to sublease as they used to be able to do as a result of the last uh, the last lease that was signed with them. They used to be able to sublease it out, that type of thing. And I think now all of the leasing is being done through uh, City of Rollingwood. Is that correct, Ashley? That is correct. Yeah. So, so when I see the, the football practice out there and there's, there's some kids sports going on in the mornings right now, so that is currently going through city of Rollingwood and that's an ongoing thing. And we're looking at changing the rates or are we looking at changing more than just the rates? What, what is the change being proposed? I guess is the question. I think we're still trying to discuss that and determine that. Um, uh, but, and that's why I'm trying to get uh, community input and for us to maybe look at other city or Paul, that's a great question. If you don't mind, I've had my hand raised. I'd love to chime in on this. Sure, uh, that we, you are correct. Western Hills Little League does not have, under the new lease agreement, the ability to sublease out. It goes through the city. And it, when evaluated, their rate structure is about $25 an hour, how it equates to the lease and the revenues that we receive from that organization. In this past summer, as well as last summer, I-9 because of the COVID and because of limited field use in the surrounding area, primarily Eanes ISD, they had approached city council to see if they could sublease under Western Hill, you know, 
with the city to be able to use for the four weeks for their camps from nine till noon. And then the city came to us and then we approved. And so that's how I-9 came out there. So that might be the youth groups that you're referring to in the mornings, Monday through Friday from nine till noon. And then uh, what we as the park commission have received, at least in the last two years where I've been serving, is we'll get a group that'll come to us to request a commercial use permit and we interview them and we ask them it, you know, how frequently are you using the fields? How many groups, how many people do you have attending? And we ask them general questions. And then we, as the commission, usually approve their usage for our parks with the commercial use permit. However, that on an annual cost is $180. So we have currently five commercial use permits, or maybe it's six. And when you tally up all of the hours that they're using our parks, our park space, it's 20 hours per week. And we're charging these folks $180 annually. And there's a disconnect between what we're charging Western Hills Little League, as well as what we're charging I-9 and then with these other groups that are coming in for a commercial use permit. So with that being the facts of what we know to date, we, Don, myself, and Phil are looking to say, and we also met with Steve Frank from Western Hills Little League, for the perspective of how can we best serve our city and be consistent with what we're requesting certain groups to do, but certainly not requesting other groups to do. I don't know if that helps any clarity or give you a better lens as to what we're discussing. It does. So it sounds like you have sort of one-off ad hoc agreements with people coming in that are not necessarily being dealt with in a consistent manner, maybe undercharged, um, and you're trying to sort of formalize that. Um, so the, I guess the general question I have that doesn't need to be answered now is, so formalizing the way things that are happening now and trying to come up with a methodology for that and potentially um, make a bit more funding off of that as long as it's not you know, uh, prohibitive to the organizations doing it, I have no, no problem with it. Part of um, my concern is understanding the financial side of it. So going back to... I'm sorry, I lost her name. Um, the way a representative, if we do end up hiring a full-time person at $40,000 a year to schedule this stuff, it, it, basically I wanna see where this is going and look at all the costs and all the revenue we get be getting and make sure we know what we're getting into and that it is gonna be financially to our benefit. Um, that's one. And then the other is to echo Jennifer. So over the last, a year and a half, primarily COVID, but a little bit before that, I've become a very regular user of the parks, specifically, I think three and four. Um, and my biggest concern right now is if this does become a regular thing and it's, you can't, uh, general residents can't predict when the parks will be available. Um, so I can't, you know, go out there for 15 minutes before work and run with my dog, play Frisbee, or if I do, half the time randomly, um, three and four will not be available. That would be a concern to me. One and two, I, I think, sorry, the, the regular, the, the better little league fields, um, those I have no concerns with. And I see also exercise classes at the, the center building. Again, um, not an issue there. My issue is more if the change shifts usage towards three and four in some way, um, that would be a concern for me. And then trying to figure out one of two things. One is differential rates so that if residents want to reserve it for, basically if residents need to reserve the park for our own going out and enjoying the park, make sure we have a low enough rate so that we can get together and rent the park that we're already paying taxes for, for our normal use, um, at a, but not at $50 an hour if we can avoid that. Um, so balancing the, I fully support youth organizations or adult exercise classes or whatever using the fields, but if we can balance that with 
what I think is one of the heavier usage right now. I was out there this morning and saw 10 people out there with dogs playing around 7.30 to 8.30. If we can balance that, I'll be happy. I think that covers what I need to say. Thanks, Paul. Thank you very much. Mary Elizabeth, you have your hand raised? Yes. Um, yes, uh, I think Paul has an excellent point. I mean, we have to figure out as our goal, to mon I, I realize we're supposed to be raising money for the parks, but as our goal to monetize these fields, or is our goal to give our residents access to, uh, to the parks for their for the children and for their families? I mean, we I don't think renting these fields for $25 or, or, or $50 even, I, I don't think that's going to raise the kind of money we truly need. I, I think we need to think about this. If somebody wants to go around out there and pitch a ball to their kid or throw a Frisbee, they need to have access to it. They, shouldn't have to, when Paul said that, about, do I need to rent a field so I can go out there and, you know, play in the park? That's just sad that a resident would ever have to ask that. So we need to consider, don't rent, don't rent this park too much. We need to give our residents access to it. So, and also, I know that sometimes we have yoga and other smaller tai chi and some of these smaller groups that come in and uh they rent the park for smaller activities i don't think that they have should have less priority than just baseball and that's all i have to say thank you what i'm hearing and what i think so we should be promoting use we should be promoting diversity and we should um we should have a balance of use, free use, free open use, and rental. I think when we're looking at the dollar amounts, I don't think really uh, it's going to generate enough money to really move the needle very far one way or the other. And when I was talking to the city of Austin, they obviously, they have a lot more funds. They have a lot more park space and a lot more diversity in their park space, but they kind of promote activities with the mind that uh, people might not be able to enjoy those activities otherwise. So it's more providing access at a low cost point um, and allowing things and then allowing programs to come in. But if if the program is causing consternation to the surrounding neighborhood or uh, or leaving litter or something like that, then basically they're willing to pull the permits quickly. And that's the reason I requested that uh, basically their application process has a lot of information in it about that and, and uh, guidelines for how the groups are vetted, how they're put in place, and uh, how they can be basically canceled if they don't comply and don't behave properly. Um, so there's a lot of information that uh, City of Austin provided. Also, I talked to Jennifer Wooten of Beat Fitness, um, and she suggested that it would be helpful, and I think this is something we might want to consider for our so. All of our vendors are vetted, all of the vendors, we go through a review process and we approve them. If we can have like a shared Google Drive or something showing uh, times and places, but maybe restrict that to our, ven our vendors that we've already approved so that they can see who's where so that they're not uh, stepping on each other and if they wanted to add a program they could go easily go out there and look that that might decrease the amount of hand holding that our city staff would require and that type of thing so that's also something i thought we might want to consider um, but once again i i think we're still in the trying to figure out what we're trying to do phase so nicole you want to speak to that or add anything so yes, sir. thank you very much. Appreciate you calling on me. Um, 
with regard to building our current existent, existing groups that use the fields, that is not what this is conversation about. We are not looking to go out today or tomorrow and go approach WEA or go approach another soccer organization or another little league group to say, hey, come and rent our fields. We are looking at currently who uses the fields and keeping it consistent across the board. That's what this purpose is about, is establishing a process and establishing consistency so that whomever comes to us or city council, there is just like we did with the Eagle Scout project. We put together a process, it's on file, and anybody who's required or interested in an Eagle Scout project can go to the city and knows exactly what the process is in order for their project to be approved. That's what this is mostly trying to achieve and attain right now is consistency so that it's fair and equitable for all groups coming through. It's not meant at this point to be able to build a monstrosity. And Phil, I disagree with you that just by taking what we currently have, if we adopted this $25 rate per hour, it's $500 a week of revenues to the city. To me, I've been on this for two years. That is moving the needle. The only fundraising effort we've ever had that I'm aware of is the park paver program, which Colleen had started. And I think we raised $200 or $2,000 for it, a little north of that. So again, we are faced with fundraising efforts. We are under a crunch to be able to service our community with that as one of our responsibilities. And it provides also consistency with how we allow vendors to come in and use our facilities. So I hope that clarifies a little bit too of that. We're not looking to build this into a mega enterprise at this juncture. This is truly about taking what we currently have, having consistency amongst both groups and organizations that use it, and then being able to streamline the process. So that's part one, is to adopt what's already been approved by city council at $25 an hour. We heard from Melissa Morrow that they charge $50 an hour. We're not looking to do that. We're not asking our residents to come in and have to reserve a field to be able to go out and use it. And my other question to this group right now with the residents, thank you so much for your feedback, is that with the current groups that we have approved, have you all ever encountered a conflict of time and usage of space? To my knowledge, I don't think that there is. And so again, it's taking what we currently have, putting consistency with regard to the pricing structure that are very op polar opposites in my opinion. Uh, so that's sort of one part of this agenda item. And then the other part would be the approved vendors, which we can discuss once we've gone through this process and answer any other questions. Okay. Well, I see Paul raised his hand. So I would like to hear from Paul Meyer. So it doesn't sound to me like there's necessarily a big conflict here. The, uh, so the current usage of the parks where they're using um, the, the first two baseball fields, I'm sorry, I don't know the terminology. It's, it's great. There's kids out there, they're having fun. And generally there's, they're using pretty much one of them at a time. So if somebody wanted to come out and play t-ball, there's another one available. And they're generally not using the third one, the double field. Um, and I have seen no conflicts. Um, the, so I have no problem with the current level and with making that a simpler process. I like the idea of vendor approval, charging a little bit more money. I don't think it would get in their way and that's fine. So I think part of it is that part is if we made this a process, it sounds like even though we're not actively going to look for more, there's the possibility that, hey, now there's a website, there's a process, we might get more. So it's not changing. It's not that we're going to looking for them. It's more raising to some citizens' attention that, hey, we do have this program, we are renting them out. And as part of that, the idea of, I'll just throw one out. Right now, some of the usage is kids playing baseball or catch with their, uh, with their family in one of the baseball fields or um, people exercising or throwing for dogs in the third field. If we set up something where, yes, you can rent out one of these, but we're generally renting out one at a time and you pick which one you want, but we're 
there's always going to be one baseball field available for kids to throw and we'll generally lean away from the dog reserved the not dog reserved sorry the dog available field um when that's being used and i'm not sure the full usage pattern there i'm in the mornings then i think we could actually support the current usage and everything you're talking about would work so i think that you're right there are two separate things one is the potential of limiting expanded usage which may be an additional item we can discuss the other is charging and organizing what we're doing now and i think they're a bit orthogonal and so i i agree with you i think there's a path forward Jen? Uh, Paul said a fair number of the things that I was going to approach. The, you, you had asked, what was it? Nicole had asked if anybody had actually had a conflict. And we have learned over the years that you can't take the dogs to go play at the park on Saturday mornings because there's usually, there's soccer or there's baseball or there's something going on there and you just don't go. So in that sense, yes, there are conflicts that we've worked around, but we know about them. And those things are predictable. You can hear the crowds. You know that there's people there. You can just go for a walk instead. Um, the one concern that it brought up with having, and, and I appreciate the idea of like an online sign up. You can you know, this is the field I want. And these are the hours I wanted. And it would be all, it would very, be very simple. The problem becomes having to, as a citizen having to check which field can I play in in advance or can I play at all? Because if all three big fields are taken and you get there and you're like, darn it, my friends and I can't play. That's, that's the, from, the, from the residential, I want to walk to the park side. That's, that's my only issue is it would be nice, as Paul said, to have one open pretty much guaranteed. That's all. All right, thank you. Uh, Mary, well, Mary, uh, Laurie? Mills? Um, please keep in mind that there are fields in the lower park that are available. So while the upper fields are deeded to youth sports and we do have a contract with Little League, there is a huge field down by the lower park that is available for throwing fris frisbees, kicking soccer balls, all of that. And I think from everything that I'm hearing here today, it just makes more sense for us to have a separate area for the dogs. Cause it sounds like from what I'm hearing, if I'm interpreting it correctly, that it's about a, a permanent space for the dogs that you know you can always use. But there are plenty of areas in the park that aren't part of the um, little league fields that are available. Okay. All right. Nicole. Yes, thank you, Lori, for that. And um, and it is. And I think we're we have this agenda item is somewhat broad, and I'm almost wondering if we should make a motion at this point to. I am going to make a motion at this point to recommend to city council that all approved vendors for commercial use will be charged $25 per hour. And that is my motion. Do I have a second, please? Motion is made. I see Lori raised grant. Uh, Mary Elizabeth had her hand raised prior to the motion, but I don't know. We can discuss it after. Well, I see citizens. Can we can we still hear more from Melissa and Mary Elizabeth before we move forward with? We can discuss after a motion in a second. Okay. All right. So we have a motion in a second. Would like to get more discussion. Mary Elizabeth, you had your hand raised. I just want to make sure. Does twenty five dollar cover the cost? I mean, when we consider the city staff time, when we consider the, the what it costs to uh, keep the fields up, I just want to know, does $25 cover the cost? Well, that, at this point, if it was, it would be $500 per week that we would generate in revenues. So I'll default 
back your question with an answer of facts and then default to either Amber or Ashley, who happens to hopefully have our financials handy. And then, then that's what I'd like to do is default to them. And let's also be mindful that it is 12.20. Okay, but again, I still need that answer. Before we vote on this, I think it's very important. I mean, you're asking us to vote on something and set it in writing. Before we set it in writing, I'd like to know, is $25 going to cover our cost? Because if not, I don't think we should put it in writing. And may, I, may I? Oh, go ahead, Don. Don has his hand raised. Oh, I can't see you, Don. I'm sorry. You may have had it raised for a while. I, I, I just announced it. Okay. Um, my thought, <laughs> may I speak now? Yes, you may. Oh, thanks. Um, I can't see anybody, so um, I I feel like this is, is too early to set an hourly rate. Um, I feel like we need to, as a group, we need to determine which fields are available, when they're available, uh, hours of the day, days of the week, et cetera, um, and have a uh, look at like best and worst cases of revenue from those available fields. And um, <clears throat> I feel like the trying to set up an hourly fee now, uh, for one thing, it could are the people that are currently using the fields probably have a, a, a de facto lease until the end of the year, I would assume, uh, since they've probably paid their 180 for the year. Um, so it won't really, uh, it won't really raise any new funds with our current people, I don't believe. And I just like to have more structure in place. Um, I 100% agree with the, the people who spoke earlier about doggedly and rigorously preserving Rollingwood citizen access to the fields, whether it's by uh, making schedules available or maybe by, I don't know what, but I think that's very important. I, I don't want to see these fields being overly commercialized because it is it's our, our neighborhood park. Yes, we share it with baseball. We share it with a handful of vendors, but I strongly support that being made available for the use of the public. And one other thing I just might mention is that the way fields one and field two are set up with the dirt infield, I know that has some advantage uh, towards the playing of baseball and softball, but that makes those virtually unusable for anything else as a whole field. Um, I don't know if baseball would be at all amenable to rethinking that and having those as grass where that field could be open for pickup games of touch football or soccer or kickball or tag or anything like that. So those are my thoughts. Okay, thanks, Don. Thank you. Uh, Melissa? Yeah, um, I really appreciate um, what Nicole was saying about consistency. Um, I do think out of fairness that it makes a lot of sense to have a process that anybody can go through and understand exactly what the rules are and um, and that we have a consistent dollar amount that we're charging everybody because Western Hills Little League has definitely, you know, paid their fair share and, um, you know, in some ways definitely compared to others. Um, but, you know, we all know that maintaining this park is an expensive endeavor and uh, we want to do it right. Um, I also appreciated what Paul said about, you know, it'd be a good idea for us to kind of look at like, what's our ideal use of the park? Like how many hours do we want it to be available to others and how many, you know, do, you know, I, I think that's a discussion that should happen. But specifically to this motion, uh, you said uh, $25 an hour, but you didn't define uh, what that, uh, so I would just say, I would probably have an addition that just says $25 per hour per field, um, or uh, if it's a yoga group uh, per area, I don't know if you would differentiate on those. Um, that's why, you know, y'all might want to 
have some sort of subgroup who basically comes up with a rate structure and says, hey, you know, $25 an hour. One of the things we do is that we will give a break on like, if you've done it, if you have it for three hours, your fourth hour is like free or something like that, because it is a lot easier to deal with one person who has it all day than eight different people who are each different hour. Um, so that's the only thing I would say is just kind of like maybe have a subgroup that, that comes to the next meeting and says, we're saying $25 per hour per field based on, and then you can get the staff to tell you, here's how much it costs us to maintain that field. And so we're really we're not trying to make money off of the fields. We're just trying to maintain them. Um, and when I say not make money, you are trying to make them to maintain what you already have. Um, anyway, I hope that helps. Appreciate that. One thing, I'm, I'm going to raise my hand verbally. One thing I did see with Austin is they had high use and or high occupancy and low occupancy. So they made distinction between uh, an instructor and 10 or fewer participants and an instructor and 10 or more participants. And I do think that too might be a structure that is worthwhile investigating, particularly if we're looking at uh, wear and tear on the field and that type of thing. That's why I say that I think we're still premature on trying to set a, a hard and fast rate structure. I do think there needs to be consistency. There may need to be a couple of tiers in that. Um, but that's all I have to add. Paul, can I hear from you again? You've got great hand raised. Yeah, it's a quick one. Just checking on the $500 per week, is that consistent annually or is that sort of the summer kids exercise stuff? What Do we have an annual expectation of revenue from this? Yes, yeah, so I have here, this is the city provided, each of our groups, the days that they're out there, the location they're out there. And I have emailed all of our vendors requesting that information. If they're there, I'm making it up for 40, weeks out of the year, or if they're there for 52 weeks out of the year to answer that question better. Even at a hypothetical, if they're there for half of a year, it's $13,000 worth of income to the city that will help pay for probably a third of one of our public works employees that we have on staff. Uh, and again, that's a conservative number to throw out there because I believe Ignite, Bar Austin, and Life Keto Martial Arts are there year round. Uh, and Don, to your point, yes, these contracts expire prematurely of the year. They go one year, one year from the date that they've come to us to ask for the commercial use permit. So we have like a pure bar that expired on June 30th of this year. We have one expiring on November 17th of this year. We have one expiring on February 9th. And then this also takes away all of that contractual bookkeeping that we have to keep up with. That Melissa, I really like your idea of that we would specify it's $25 per hour within our park. And that way it's the pavilion, it's the upper, it's the lower, it's the grass area in between fields one and two, wherever they end up, they're just $25 an hour. And with regard to that number, city council came up with that number. They've obviously done due diligence and research as to why that number works with Western Hills Little League and the way that they set that contract up, as well as the way that they've granted I-9 $25 per location, uh, of their summer program. So they rented, they paid $75 because they had three locations dedicated to them. So I like Melissa's idea. Thank you so much for bringing that to our attention of saying per area. And again, with regard to the dollar amount, my opinion is, is I trust our city council. They did their research. We as the commission can make the recommendation and the motion to be able to say $25 per location in our fields and we can be more specific if we need to with regard to how we present it to council. Okay, uh, Mary Elizabeth. Well, with all due respect to city council, no one is trying to say that they don't know their business. Uh, there's a good chance that that $25 number has been around for a number of years. We're saying it's our job. We should do, give it due diligence and, and do the research on this. That's what we're saying. And, that, and I honestly believe that's what city council expects of us. So that's what we're trying to do here. Thank you. Okay. Amber? 
Uh, so Vicki and Carrie and I just uh, worked on some numbers and it looks like it's about $30 an hour to take care of all five fields. So at $25 per location, we are covering our costs for all three of those fields almost. Right, that includes staff time, that includes fuel, that includes um, vinegar for weed killer, that includes some grass seed, um, the occasional irrigation repair. Yes. Does nope. that include nope. things like the, uh, uh, what do you call it that we do, or the, the aerating and so forth? Yes, it includes that as well. Wow, that's great. Yeah. I'll put in May I ask a question here? Oh, go ahead, Don. Does uh, baseball pay $25 per hour per field that they use? Is that how their lease is structured? To where if they're using all five fields that are paying $125 an hour? No. Or do they pay? Do they treat their use of the park as the use of a single field? They have a lease in place with the city. They're not hourly. Okay. And it's multi-year. Okay. Um, so baseball doesn't, does not pay hourly for the fields. No. They have a lease in place. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're paying a, a yearly lease. This is separate from the lease, separate from the Little League. This is our contracted exercise and other sports related activities for the park. Correct. Is anybody currently paying $25 an hour for the use of the fields? I-9 is through the city contract and the sublease that council approved, that we approved, they pay $75. Fields three, four, and five is considered one field. Fields one is one and field two is one. So they, I-9 contracted the three fields, three is three, four, and five for $25 per field, $75 per hour, three hours a day, five days a week for the four weeks this summer. And that's what okay. we're trying to bring the same consistency and structure into the way other vendors come to us for a commercial use permit and say the same process is going to exist for anybody who comes to us to request usage and rentals of the fields or the pavilion or anywhere within our parks. And I would suggest that we did not approve three, four and five to be one space and one field. Uh, we had a vote and then it got overridden by city council. But um, so I would say three, four, and five are three separate fields. That's a much larger area. And I also- You can't, when you we, can't. Yes, I can. I can speak my mind the same as you can, Nicole. Okay. And so three, four, and five, I would say is a much larger area. And with reference, deference to our citizens and having balanced use of our park space, I would suggest that when vendors come, they would first be on fields one and two if they're available before going to three, four, and five. If we're renting out three, four, and five, the same dollar amount is one and two, that doesn't seem to make good financial sense. So, Paul? Oh, Amber, we, I'm Amber, Amber was first. Amber, sorry, Paul. Amber had her hand raised first. I'd like to hear from Amber first. Oh, so I was just calculating, I calculated the number of hours in a year and then how much um, Little League and softball pay us. And if they use the fields 24 7, um, they're paying us $53 an hour for all of the fields. But I mean, that, that's just to kind of give you a reference. So um, definitely, I think that thirty dollars an hour um, is a is, is a deal for what you're getting at the field. Yeah. Oh. yeah, just a quick one. Do we have an do we have a feel for the number of vendors who come in who prefer using three or four or five over one or two? Is it different activities um, or what drives that trade-off? We have not been 
requested, other than I-9, no other vendor that I'm aware of has requested three, four, and five. That right. Ignite is Pavilion or Upper Park. Upper Park, they usually end up on fields one or two. Again, other than I-9, I do not know of any vendor that has requested three, four, and five. And that's when their numbers support the amount of athletes that they get to register for their non-baseball, non-softball, multi-sport camps. So you're differentiating. I know that came up earlier about what group's coming in here. But anyways, it's getting off side topic. And I know we're really cognizant of our time trying to wrap up our meetings within an hour, uh, hour and a half at the most. So uh, is there more discussion at this point or questions? I had a quick question. This is Chad. Do we have a provision in there that says they'll repair any damages that they cause if they go out there in the middle of a rainstorm and just tear up the turf or anything like that? if they tear up fencing or anything like that. I presume we do, but I just want to make sure before we go any further. I don't believe we currently do, but I know that was something that Austin had in their package. And that's why I was suggesting that we look deeper at Austin and actually putting appropriate guardrails on our usage in that way. Um, because they do, they do specifically address that in their application package that I uh, requested to have included on this agenda item. Um, okay, just the, the fact that they repair any damages and that they carry whatever you know, insurance is required, kind of liability insurance would be important to me, but otherwise. Um, well, I know they are part of our Part of our process for approval is making sure they have liability insurance and that uh, they have, you know, the appropriate assurances. And I think we also have them provide IDs and that type of thing. I don't know if we do a criminal background check. Uh, Amber? Amber? Yes, I was just going to say, yes. I, I yeah, you're right, Phil. We do require insurance. We do require uh, background checks, and we uh, the city attorney drafted the agreement. So um, I'm I'm not privy to exactly what that agreement says, but I know that the city attorney would provide for protection in case of, in the event of any damages. Okay, okay. Melissa. Um, uh, <clears throat> at Wayo, we do in the summertime because uh, we have so many camps that want to be up here, and we have a uh, baseball field that the infield obviously doesn't get used at all but the outfield and we are able to actually uh, rent it out to three separate groups at the same time at that um, $50 an hour so I mean space is really hard to come by um, I think you'll be surprised once people get the idea that they can uh, rent at Rollingwood you, you will get a lot of people who groups that will want to do it um, but I was just sharing that you, you can have three separate groups. Obviously, you have to think about it. Like we can't have boys high school baseball at the same time that we have karate and sport ball, but we can have gymnastics, sport ball, and karate all at the same time because they don't really need the, the whole big space. Um, so anyway, but um, that's it. Thank you. Amber, do you have something to add again? Oh, no, sorry. I forgot to lower my hand. No worries. All right, well, I think we've had, I'm not seeing out any other hands, so I think we have our discussion. So we had a motion, we had a second, and the motion was to set the hourly rate at $25 an hour. Um, still not 100% clear on the parameters of that, but that was the motion. So with that, I'm assuming we are headed to a vote. So I'm gonna do roll vote. Uh, Nicole Marisi. Yes, or aye. Aye. Yeah, all those wanna, who wanna vote in favor say aye. All those opposed say no. Lori Mills. Aye. Chad Smith. Aye. Don. Uh, no. Don Hudson, no. Uh, Mary Elizabeth Kofer. Aye. Uh, and Phil McDuffie is a no. So four to two, the ayes have it.
We have a rate of $25 and recommendation going to the town. Moving on to agenda item number three. Real quick, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. I apologize. I didn't know if we're, there's a second part of this agenda item and um, it's in relation to this whole process is that let's use the I-9 as an example. I-9 as a subleaser has to go to city council every time that they want to rent our fields. City council approves it or and then sends it to us and then we have to approve it and send it back to council. As you can imagine, when you're trying to operate a business efficiently, it's a very, it's a very, it's a month, it's a three month process in order for I-9 to be able who have already used our fields for two years in the past to have to go through this process each time that they are requesting to rent our fields. And so in looking at opportunities to be able to streamline the process when a vendor has been approved, just like we don't ask this of any other group that comes to us right now with the $180 annual fee, why are we doing this with I-9 who's already been approved as a vendor? So I was wanting to bring to discussion an opportunity to be able to streamline the process of which a vendor goes through to be able to use the fields as long as it's not in conflict with Western Hills Little League or girls softball, because that has precedence over our field usage that we would be able to adopt and make a recommendation to city council that either they're an approved vendor, that they have an, a one year lease process. I've asked uh, Amber's insight on this as well to see how we could structure it with regard to how EANS ISD does it. Uh, we go in on an annual basis. We fill out a Google form. We provide all of our credentials and documentation. And then we are granted, as long as we have that insurance policy from the date of that insurance for a calendar year after that, to be able to use the fields based on availability. And so again, just trying to streamline the process for groups that have already been approved through city council and through the park commission to be able to come in and use the fields in a consistent uniform basis so that we're not holding them back out of three months and that we're not taking up hours of our time as well as hours of city council's time to discuss the same thing that we've already agreed and approved. Well, one thing I would propose since we have this rolling calendar with our current vendors is to maybe make it just for simplicity's sake, calendar year. So if a vendor came to us mid-year, <clears throat> basically they would pay for the year and then that expires December 31st or something like that. And then once approved, if there's no reason that we had an issue with them that they would be assumed to remain an approved vendor and wouldn't have to go through an approval process every year, uh, just as a matter of making it, simplifying it and causing less strain on our city staff to administer it. I'd just like to see us simplify that as much as possible. Um, Paul, I see you got your hand raised. Just clarifying what the proposal is. So is the proposal now that once you are an approved vendor, you can go on some website, see the current schedule and reserve as much of any of the fields you want, no limits, as long as Western Hills or Girl Softball doesn't have it, you could reserve the parks unlimited. Is that the proposal or are there some constraints or limits or you can continue your current lease? I'm not quite clear what the request is that you brought up two good questions there. And that's what this discussion is about is how do we wanna set up a policy that's a streamlined process that's consistent with the groups that we've already had coming into us. So we have I-9 that operates through the city that gets approval when Western Hills Little League is not using the fields. Then we have this other subgroup that based on what our recommendation is, passing at this meeting, we will take away commercial use permit fees moving forward if city council approves it and everybody will go to an hourly rate. So their schedules will have to be posted with the city staff and then we'll have to have access to that like we currently do to provide that information to our residents. And then moving forward, 
that is where we're at discussion now. How do we want to streamline it so that an organization, I'm using I-9 because they've rented from us for the past two years, they would like to do a Thanksgiving break camp because the students are out of school for an entire week. So what is the process going to be for them? Traditionally, historically speaking, what it's been is they go to city council, request the dates, city council either approves it, which they usually do, sends it to us, we bump it back to city, they get approval. So Justin Cannon has to take, plus the city staff, plus our commission has to take the amount of time to go ahead who's already been approved to come in and request that as long as it doesn't conflict. And so that's where we're trying to get to the conversation and the dialogue to make the recommendation of what is our approval process going to be for approved vendors to be able to rent our space. Does that help? It does. The specific question though is right now, I understand the current process is onerous, but at least there's some sanity check or discussion when they come in. So what I'm looking, so if somebody came in and said, I want to rent it 12 hours a day, seven days a week, the city council would probably say, no, you can't do that. So I'm fine with streamlining the process, but what I'm trying to figure out now is if we're going to remove those sanity checks and just say, you can rent it, click the box here. What are the limits in place now to prevent somebody from doing something that we don't approve. Now, I suppose we could now try and claw that back, recognize that they signed up for too much and go push back in some way, but it seems like it might be better to think about it up front. What are the expectations we're looking at? You know, Thanksgiving, summer, these are the limits. The rest of the year, these are the limits. And basically, that's, that's what I'm looking at. What, and I believe you have an expectation, Nicole, of certain current usage, and we want to streamline that certain current usage. Makes total sense. So if we can create some limits that allow the current usage, allow what you're expecting and allow a certain list of approved vendors to repeat the kind of thing they're doing. I'm all for that. It's yeah. just every possible approved vendor that we ever put on our list can check up. I'm nervous about boundaries on that. That makes sense. And you know, let's use the I-9 as an example. Justin Cannon sent over to us, and I believe it's in our last agenda packet that you'll see that he's proposed on an annual basis of certain times of the year that he would like to use the fields. And so that could be part of the process is to say, in order to be granted your rental of our space, you need to provide on an annual basis when you would like to use the fields. And then we would approve that documentation as a commission uh, to be able to go ahead and rent the space to those groups. So I like that idea of a checks and balances process that you can't just come in and rent it for 12 hours a day. But Justin Cannon, because I asked him, I said, if the process was easier, Justin, how would you propose to utilize our space? And he sent it to me. And like I said, it's in one of our packets. It's either last money meeting or the meeting before. And that to me makes a lot of logical sense because we get our eyes on it we approve it or we deny it. And then they're now allowed to rent based on what we as the commission have agreed as appropriate usage. Does that help answer your question? Yeah, I think Paul is looking for us to have some approval process after some mistakes. And that's how EANS ISD does it. What you do is you put in your requests for your dates and times that you want. And then based off of their mega system, it either is available or it's not. And that's how we would function as well, is we would say, submit it to us, and then we will approve or deny it based on our conversation as a commission. And then they'll be able to grant it to go and there's your rate. And then we can more easily publish this in our communication efforts with our residents. I think it just helps everybody be more aware of what is happening when and where. Um, Melissa. Oh. That did just, yeah, that, that reminded me that, um, you know, as far as like giving parameters to people, uh, when we say $25 an hour, we're basically thinking that it's going to be two adults and about 20 kids. Um, so you do want to limit because if you end up, um, having one group who basically, uh, <clears throat> brings, I mean, on the same field, you can imagine the, the tearing up that happens. If I, if I use 
um, three, four, and five for 200 kids with 10 adults, which, I mean, believe it or not, uh, Westlake Soccer will, will, will do that. They'll have a huge number of kids on a small, now on the turf field, it's not a problem because they really stand up, but on grass fields, uh, that's too many kids. And, and, and the other thing is you do need to differentiate between big kids and little kids. When we have a bunch of toddlers on a field, it really doesn't do much. But when we have high schoolers on fields, it makes a big difference on how it gets torn up. And I love lacrosse, but oh my gosh, it really tears up our field. Um, and, and in a very, you know, uh, uh, specific spaces. So um, I'm not saying that, you know, I definitely believe in the streamline, but, you know, just making sure that we, we kind of put some parameters on how many kit people we're talking about for that $25 an hour is sort of like a standard of, of how many. Oh, and the other one that really gets to be a tricky one is rain out. Um, what to me what, what is obvious that the field should not get, you should not get on it because it was pouring all day yesterday. To other people, they're like, oh, it's good enough, it stopped raining. Um, so you really do need to kind of establish, a, you know, and, and what we do is we just say by 3 p.m. that day, we will let you know if it's rained out. If it's clear earlier than the day, then we'll let you out know before then. But you do really want to stop it because that's, that's what I was going to say is, the thing that tears up the fields more than anything, whether it's people who are or organized or not organized, is getting out there in the middle of a rainstorm. And let me tell you, 16, 17 year old boys, there's nothing more fun than playing um, tag football um, on a slushy, you know, field. So um, we'll, we, we should get some signs out there that basically say field is closed. And I know that's again pain, but you know, the Rollingwood staff are up at those fields every morning anyway. So they could just kind of keep the, the sign in the back of the truck and put it up when it's needed. That's a very good point. Thanks, Melissa. Diana? Diana? Hi. All right, Amber? Oh, Diana. From all the information I'm hearing and gathering. Diana, unfortunately, the internet is not allowing you to come through in a way that we can hear you. Um, maybe if you can call in. We're just not able to hear you. I'm sorry. You can try again. Amber, you have something to add while we try to figure out? Yeah, I, um, I appreciate all this discussion on the scheduling. I just do want to point out that the EISD has a full-time person and robust software that's dedicated to that task. You have three public works employees um, right now who already have their hands full between the park and um, water and wastewater. Um, so I just want us to be mindful that with this ask, you are probably going to also be asking for uh, additional resources in the in the form of staff time and possibly software. So just to make that clear, because all of our plates are super full, we, we cannot take on this additional scheduling. Well, and that's why I think part of when vendors come to us, they tell us the days of the week and the times that they're asking for, and then so it's a one-time scheduling, if I'm hearing correctly, uh, rather it's than. Still, I mean, someone still has to manage that. I mean, even if it's a, an Excel spreadsheet, someone still has to be in charge of that. Someone still has to be checking with the other vendors. Someone still has to, um, you know, make sure it gets on the park commission agenda. Somebody still has to own that. And I'm just making sure we all understand that that is somebody's time that we do not have a resource for today. I understand. Phil, could I break in here? Yes, please. Um, 
what would probably be a good idea on this is we did talk about how we might structure this in a meeting uh, with Nicole and, and Phil and I. Um, I think that probably a proposed, uh, it's almost like a, a map of the fields, each showing each area that is available, um, what days of the, what hours of the day and days of the week it's available and these it right now it's pretty pretty amorphous and i think that should be dealt with maybe a proposal could be created in an, uh, a subcommittee meeting and we can look at it more as a as a proposal for how we might manage this um my thoughts i think it's a, it's a very broad discussion and it's um I think it's tricky to to make decisions um, when it's so broad. It, I think if it were made into a, uh, like a map and a spreadsheet, for example, um, where it wouldn't be a, a hugely complicated thing, and maybe uh, uh, city staff would say, "Ugh, too much work," but I think that's where we ought to go with this. Well, and that's kind of what I'm hearing too, is that I think we need to manage and balance the, the ask as Amber's pointing out on the city staff. You know, we need to make sure that we're not creating a system that's just gonna be too chaotic or asking them to be too hyper controlling. We need to balance whatever we're, uh, suggesting to city council that there's a balance with what it's going to take to administer with city staff and then also making it so that we're promoting activities in our park and all that sort of thing and we're covering our costs so um, i agree with both you and 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 don on that that again this was a topic for discussion. It sounds like we have enough interest to be able to, the three of us, break down again and put together a process that we would then bring back to the next meeting to discuss openly with the fellow commission members. And then we can fine tune it and tweak it. And then if we're, we need to readjust after that, we can. Or if we think that we've made enough progress, we could certainly make a recommendation to city council. But that's kind of what this was about, is to bring it to the surface we seem to have enough interest in this to pursue it and to get more specifics on how the process would look. Then we can bring it back to next meeting, discuss it openly with everybody here and then fine tune it if we still need to or move forward at that point. Is that correct? Works for me, works for you, Don. I, I agree, I agree. Okay, Amber, great. do we need to make a motion on this or we're just gonna divide off and separate it onto a different agenda item for next meeting? I don't think a motion's necessary. Yeah. So we've got six whole minutes. We want to maybe try to have any discussion on item number three of the trail stabilization. If Are we ready to move on as a group? Am I hearing any objection to moving on? This I think is Melissa has raised. It's oh. one o'clock and I'm going to have to drop off. Okay. Melissa, let's hear from um, you. I was going to tell you, even though, you know, we're a youth organization, all we do is schedule stuff. We have found um, that it's really important to have what we call open gym and open field time for things that are, are unstructured. And we're not even a public park. And we recognize that kids need just, um, and adults need time just to, to be in the park. And so whatever we do, whatever y'all come to conclusion, I would keep our park not over scheduled, like really make sure that we leave some open time and that, you know, that we never book the entire park at one given time. Um, so that you traffic flow, et cetera, for our neighbors is not too terrible. So anyway, that's what I was just going to say is just that make sure that we're, because you really do have to book open time in the park. It, it gives the, the fields to rest and just gives everybody a, a, a chance to do like what Paul said and Jen of just, you know, being able to go over there when you want. And I do believe in the Google calendar. I have to say I'm a huge fan um, that, because that's something that so many people can have access to and can kind of be, um, and then the last thing I'll say is, you know, really, probably you're look in your ideal world, you're really looking for just one or two other vendors, at least on the field stuff, um, because 
you know, Western Hills Little League is making capital improvements and doing things like that. And you really, the more people that only use it for an hour, those people tend to not care if they leave trash. They don't care if, but if it's people who rent it for many hours, they really become part of your community and they care, they take care of it. And that's less time for Amber and the rest of the staff to have to schedule, et cetera. If you kind of get it down to like two or three vendors, and you, you have a goal of how much money you want to make and how you want it to look, um, that's probably your, your best uh, formula. Okay, Melissa, I'm going to put you on the spot. You can uh, get angry with me later. But I'm, I'm asking, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of expertise. I would be wondering if we were able to schedule a time where Don, Nicole, and myself could meet would you be open to the possibility of also meeting with us? We had Steve Frank at our first meeting. Um, with, is there any possibility of that for you? I would be happy to meet with you. I do not want to be on the park commission. So no, I'm no, 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 very no. clear not, about that. We can't um, have you on the park commission because you would be a violation of the Open Meetings Act. That's there the you go. So you. yeah, no, I uh, no, I'd be more than happy to sit with you guys okay. and and share um, my knowledge. I, and and honestly, we do that all the time with. Um, Lake Travis and the YMCA, and we all get together all the time to kind of hash through this stuff because a lot of them are similar problems and, and things and PARD also. So yeah, I'm happy to do that. Okay, well, you will be hearing from us. So thank you. Okay, I, I'm going now back to work though. <laughs> okay, bye. Okay, we got two whole minutes. I don't think, I think Lori already had to drop off. Um, so I think maybe, uh, What's appropriate is a motion to close. So do I hear a motion to, do I hear such a motion? A motion that we close the meeting. A uh, motion by Mary Elizabeth that we close the meeting. I second, second the motion. Second by Chad. I saw your hand, Nicole, but Chad has a <laughs> very oh, manly I, voice. I so. want to say thank you, though, to all the citizens that spoke at this meeting, and I hope they know how much we appreciate that their input it means a lot to us and it makes it easier to do our job and yes. thank you all for all of this it was very interesting very well yeah, said. Thank agree you. thank you thank you to the citizens very okay. much thank you so any of uh, all those in favor of adjourning raise aye. hand we have aye. Aye. aye any opposed aye yeah hearing mm -hmm. none we are adjourned thanks everybody can i, thank say, you. One, can I say one last thing yeah I'm in the Pacific Northwest and y'all aren't. Bye. See <laughs> y'all next time. You're mean. I know. But it's cool and raining down here, so it's not that bad. I know. I heard that. I, I mean, I leave town and it starts raining. Yep. Uh, all right. Y'all right. cries when you leave, Mary Elizabeth. The sky cries. Oh, <laughs> that's cute. Bye. Bye.